right we are now live hey player welcome to another live stream here on my channel for those of you that are new here my name is josh every single week i make videos sharing tips ideas and stories teaching you how to be your best self and in this live stream we're going to be talking about five tips for getting over a crush that doesn't like you back I know a lot of you guys have crushes on different people, people that you've liked for the longest time. Maybe it was a crush you had a few years ago and you still hold those feelings for them and it's just hard for you to move on and without thinking about them, without wanting to be with them. In this live stream, I wanna walk through different things that's important to realize and learn about those past crushes or even existing crushes you have now that you know you have no chance with, they don't like you back, they're in a relationship, they see you as a friend, we're talking about those specific crushes. Um, I wanna dive into those points, but before I do that, if you haven't already hit the thumbs up on this video, guys, let's see how many thumbs up we can get to by the end of the live stream. So anyone watching, hit the thumbs up. Also, I wanna give shout outs to all the early birds here in the chat. If you're someone that is jumping in for the first time or if you come to the chats before, I see a lot of familiar faces in here, jump into the chat right now and say hi so you can get your shout out. All right, let's see who we got in here. Anthony Quento, good to have you, Anthony. Dono the Gamer, Judah Rondez, Stuart Douglas, Rage Master, Random XPT, Yancey's in here, Grayson the Goosebumps Kid, good to, good to have you, Grayson, Christian Barron, Mason Kelsing, Alex Burns, Haha, ha, you mad, uh, Jalen's in here, Jalen, good to have you, my man, Melvin's in here, Synchro Legend, Trinity the Monkey, Music Man, Haley Davidson, Palmer Creer, Frimpong Yaw, Noah Ayash, um... Hamza, Hamza Shalabi, Jay Special, Kip Neal. Well, the chat's moving fast now. For, Forrest Veneer, <laughs> Dave Video Studios, Unknown Zay, Gabe Man, Christopher Rosenbert, Dustin Downs, The Irish Sicilian, James Ralston, uh, Isabel Gweth, Caden Does Things. We got a lot of people in here, a lot of new faces too. Some of you guys I've never seen before. So if you're someone that's new here, right new in the live stream, I wanna know who are some of the new people in here uh, so I can say hello to you. Anyway, as I walk through these points, if you have a burning question, now what I consider a burning question is something that's on your mind that you want to grab my attention, you just want my perspective on, you can always use the super chat function. That's a little dollar sign icon next to where you're typing. Uh, you could donate a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever it is that you want. It'll put your question front and center in front of me. I will stop what I'm talking about and I will address your question. I consider them burning because you need to you need an answer right now. So you're gonna su submit that and I'm gonna stop what I'm doing. We're gonna get you the answer that you're looking for. So you can use super chat function for that. Now, as I move forward, guys, as I move into kind of the different points here, I wanna just kind of preface it a little bit here. Now, I mentioned in the beginning, this is the focus here is going to be on crushes that have kind of escaped you in a way. People that you wanted to go out with, but maybe you missed your opportunity or, you know, people that you just find yourself thinking about years after you like them, right? Maybe you graduated from school, but they're still on your mind and you want to still go out with them. You, you hope that one day you will. As I walk you through these points, I hope you can kind of realize whether it makes sense to continue to pursue that person or to let go and move on. Ultimately, that decision is going to be up to you. So I want you to take the things we talk about in this live stream and I want you to just think about them, ruminate on that decision for yourself and decide what makes the most sense. Now, let's see, I'm seeing a bunch of new people here. S uh, Ezekiel Molina's new, the Irish Sicilian's new, uh, Kip Neal's an OG, good to have you, Kip. Um, Haha, you mad is semi new, so well, maybe this is like the second or third live stream, maybe. Uh, John D123 is new. Darkest Knight says, just be Chad. Darkest Knight, always a pleasure to have you, my man. I'm glad you're part of this community. I understand you come from the perspective of like black pilled. Chads are the only ones that can succeed. But I'm, I'm hoping that in our conversations, you can see that the world is a little bit more varied than just that framework, that there's a little bit more that goes into it. So hopefully in talking about it, we can kind of discuss that and see where it goes. But I'm happy that you're part of the community, man. I'm happy that you're here. I love our conversations and I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you exist, man. Anyway, let's jump into point number one here, guys. I want to start just kind of expressing here what, what it is that I'm talking about. When I say, um, you know, five tips for getting over a crush that doesn't like you back. Tip number one is gonna be this. You're gonna find someone that you like more than them. I know it may not feel that way, especially if this is one of your the first crushes you've ever had, but the truth of the matter is this. It's that, you know, I remember back when I was younger too, the first girls that I came across that I developed crushes for, I thought, man, this is true love. They are my soulmates. They are perfect in every way. I, I want to get married to them. I'm going to end up with them. That's how I felt. 
right? And I think a lot of people feel that way when they start developing their first crushes or people that they start to like. You might have an interaction with someone in your school or in your hometown or at your church or wherever it may be that you feel like, wow, this is the person for me. And the truth of the matter is, is that if you like someone that doesn't seem to like you back, that things really aren't working well there, that you don't really see a path forward or you don't know how to move that path forward, there's a high likelihood that eventually you're going to come across someone else that you like more. Now, the reason why I mentioned this point is that in order to get over someone that you currently are still obsessed with, currently still infatuated with, currently still have one-itis for, for those of you that don't know what one-itis is, one-itis means that you've kind of developed a crush on someone and you just can't get them out of your mind. They're the only person you think about and you just can't even imagine thinking or about anyone else or dating anyone else. That's essentially what one-itis is. I think the step in the step forward in getting over that one itis and getting over those feelings is to recognize that, hey, I'm going to start to meet more people and, and I'm going to start to like more people. I tell people this all the time whenever they're like, I'm still hung up on my crush. I'd say, OK, well, is there anyone else that you're interested in pursuing? Anyone else that you're talking to right now? Maybe you have friends in your school that you can message through Instagram. Maybe there's someone in your class that you think is a cool person and you might want to get to know better. The only way you're really going to start to get over that one crush is if you start to replace those feelings kind of for someone else. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to take that route, right? You may just decide I'm going to get over this person by focusing on myself, focusing on my own growth, focusing on just being my best self, and that's it. But I think that it's hard to kind of accept that, hey, I'm going to stop pursuing this person and maybe even try to stop liking them if there's no one else really that you think is worth pursuing, right? It's like saying, you know, like, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, like baseball is the only thing that I enjoy playing. It's the only sport that I will ever enjoy playing. It's like, well, have you tried playing football? Have you tried hockey? Have you tried wrestling? Have you tried um, soccer? Have you tried any of these other things? If you haven't tried out these other sports and seen what it's like, tried it out. How do, how do you align with it? Then you don't really have a, a wide enough perspective of what you really enjoy. And I think that's the same thing applies to crushes too. If you kind of only have honed in on this one crush because they just are really attractive or really cool or really popular, or really smart, whatever it may be, but you haven't really tried to talk to other people or see if you can develop those other crushes, then I think that you're kind of holding yourself in that place. You haven't allowed yourself to brand, uh, branch out and expand more. Now I want to turn to you guys here in the chat here. Let's get a chat poll going. And I'm, I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. Um, for those of you that have a crush on someone, right? Are they are they your first crush? Like your first real crush? Not like, hey, I like the few other people, but I mean like your first real crush. The person that whenever you think about them, like, ah, you just get those warm feeling, warm fuzzy feelings inside and you just, it's, it's hard to imagine thinking about someone else or pursuing someone else. You know, is your is the crush that you have now that first crush? Type yes or no in the chat. I want to hear what you guys have to say. I'm going to jump in and look at see, see what some of you guys are saying here. Azim says, I feel like it's easier to express feelings quicker when cold approaching, but not to people I see every day. I feel like awkwardness takes over if they reject me. Yeah, I think that uh, it's definitely easier to, to express those feelings to random strangers because you see them, it works or it doesn't work, you move on. But when you're doing it to someone that is in your class, someone that you see in your neighborhood, someone that you see regularly, it you feel like there's a lot more higher stakes, right? Because if you make things awkward, you're going to have to interact with that person way more. Now, I ask you guys, is your current crush kind of like your first real crush, the person you really, really just have this deep desire for? And here's what you guys had to say. Um, Ezekiel Molina says yes. Jalen Jalen retracted the message. Dustin Down says no. Uh, Isabel says yeah. Um, Caden says, it's hard having a long distance relationship. My first girlfriend moved to California and I couldn't do a long distance. Yeah, Caden, long distance relationships can be tough. Um, there's a lot of ways I think to make them work. And I have a few videos that might be super helpful. So I would definitely check those out. <clears throat> uh, Jalen says, no, uh, Melvin says, no, random says, yes. Obi-Wan says, no, Caden says, yes. Forrest says, no, Giselle says, yes. Um, darkest night says, I literally don't want to even participate in life anymore because they mess me up so much missing out on my crush. I'm an incel darkest night. I hear where you're coming from. When you lose that opportunity with your crush, it feels soul crushing, right? But here's something that, that I kind of learned. And yesterday I jumped on a call with um, um, the Social Good Club, right? And basically what their mission, uh, what the mission of the talk yesterday was about understanding how men in society kind of um, 
perpetu- perpetuate violence against women through things like attaching worth to the, to them, right? So let's say you like a crush, so you have a crush on someone and they turn you down. A lot of times it's easy to get angry or violent and to flip it on that person and to call them names, to attack them, to yell at them, to berate them, to dishonor their character, do everything you can to push off your actual feelings onto that person. So that was kind of part of the talk there on this idea of like, you know, hey, when we feel angry, do we take it out on someone else or do we try to manage those feelings and maybe talk about our feelings and find healthy ways to express them? So I understand how you can get to that feeling darkest night. I think a lot of people do. Dono says, ah, Walmart girl, I can't move on. Dono, I hear you on that. I, 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 I understand where you're coming from on the Walmart girl, man. So yeah, jumping back in here, Chululu Manco says, yes. Digital says, hi, how you doing, Digital? Uh, Stewart says, no. So it's kind of a mix here of yeses and nos, which I think is totally normal, right? I think for some of you guys, the crush you have now is like, that's your one person. But hey, maybe the person you like is just the person you like. Maybe it's not so super intense and that's okay too. I think ultimately it is important to recognize though, like I said, that you will develop more crushes as time goes on. The person you have a crush on now, even if you feel like they are the one, most likely isn't. Because I know for a lot of you guys, you're young, right? Like when I was younger too, I felt that way too. I felt like, man, I'm never going to find anyone that I like as much as this person. And I think as you get older, you start to realize that that's not entirely true. You develop new crushes. You develop new feelings for people. You develop new experiences. And I'm going to dive a little bit more back into that topic as we go along. But I want to jump into point number two here, guys. Um, And that's going to be this. Point number two is this, give them space, Uh, giving them space is good for the both of you to grow. Now, a lot of times when people have crushes, one of the things they really focus in on is trying to maximize the amount of time they talk to that person, they're around them, and you know, they interact with them. Sometimes though, it can actually work against you, right? This is what tends to happen with guys in the friend zone and even girls in the friend zone as well, anyone in the friend zone, is that They think that the more time I spend with this person, the better chance I have of dating them. And that's not always true. And the reason why that's not always true is because you may be spending more time interacting with your crush and talking to your crush, but you may be solidifying more so that they see you as a friend, especially if you're not pursuing them in any kind of romantic way, especially if you're not flirting with them more, asking them out, if you're just kind of casually talking to them every single day, they may start to feel like, hey, you know what? This person is a good friend to me. They're clearly not asking me out. They clearly don't like me. So I see them as a friend. They kind of lock you in that zone. Now, the reason why I say giving them space is good is that you want to give that person time to kind of figure things out on, on their own, right? It's like if If you are constantly pursuing that person and only that person and only talking to that person, well then like, as I said in the first point, you're not seeing what other options you have available, but you might be just digging yourself deeper into that friend zone. So letting go gives you the chance to focus on new things and new people, right? Giving them that space might mean, hey, you know what? I'm gonna try to not message them every day. Maybe I'll talk to them when I have something interesting to share, or I wanna just really dive in and catch up with them, but I'm not gonna keep centering my life around them. Now, especially if that crush doesn't like you back uh, and you get friend zoned by them or whatever may happen, a lot of people think, "Uh uh-oh, well, you know what? I'd rather have that person in my life, even if I know that they don't like me, versus them not being in my life and, you know, like not going anywhere. So sometimes people will settle for a position that they don't really want, right? That might be the friend zone. That might be, you know, like just being flat out rejected, not even being friends with them, but, you know, like just being able to talk to them, interact with them, and just to get their attention in any which way. And that's what I think is important to remember here, guys. That tip is going to be, to really give them space from time to time, especially if you've been rejected, especially if you feel like you're in the friend zone. So how do you kind of tell if you're in the friend zone? There's a few different factors, a lot of different factors, but some simple ones might be that you start to notice that they refer to you as a close friend. Oh, you're such a good friend to me. Or sometimes for girls to guys, they may call the guy, hey buddy, hey bro, you're like a brother to me. Like these kind of phrases where you feel like, wow, that's not something you'd say to someone that you like that's something you might say to someone you see as a brother or a 
good friend. Um, they can really be off-putting. They can make you feel like, uh-oh, like I'm losing here. So sometimes when people feel like they're losing with their crush, they try to go in deeper. And I think that's the actual, that's it. You should actually do the opposite approach. I think you should actually pull back a little bit. Take some time to recalibrate. Take some time to focus on yourself, the things you enjoy, what you want to do versus diving deeper into trying to get closer to that person. Now, I want to jump in and see what some of you guys are saying here in the chat here. Let's see. Jalen says, hi, Josh, uh, is sending my crush a letter from a friend is going to help me get unblocked by my crush? And if not, then how long should I wait until I could try to work things out with her again? Yeah, Jalen, I think I think from all of our conversations here in the live streams and through DMs and things like that, I think that you, you represent a really good case of that of like, I know that you've been pursuing your crush for the longest time and she's blocked you. She has a boyfriend. She's kind of distanced herself from you. But I think that there's still a pull from you. Sorry, there's still a pull from you to really try to want to get closer to her. So th I think that to that second point, Jalen, I think that would apply best to your situation, right? It'd be a situation. <clears throat> I think it's time for a water break. Okay, Jalen, I think in your situation where, hey, your crush has blocked you and, you know, like they have a boyfriend and they're kind of trying to move on with their life. Just giving your friend a letter to give to your crush, I don't think is going to help the situation. I think it might actually hurt the situation because your your crush might be saying, hey, why is this guy still trying to approach me even though I've kind of given him signals that I'm not interested? So Jalen, I think it's important to reevaluate that situation and ask yourself, am I, am I spending my time in the most useful way? Is there a high likelihood that I can make this situation work or should I try to pursue other people in the meantime and really focus my attention elsewhere? Let's see what else you guys are saying in the chat here. Um, Stuart says, oh, I guess you guys are talking to each other, which is awesome. Guys, look, if someone is in the chat and they're saying something that you connect with, something that you feel you can share advice on, something that you relate to, jump in and respond to them. The whole point of this is to communicate with each other, right? I'm just a person who has set up this live stream, but you guys all have your own thoughts and feelings and experiences too. And they're just as important to hear out and share. So definitely jump into the chat and share what you're thinking, share what's on your mind, share how you feel about something someone else may say. And hit the like button if you haven't already. <laughs> okay, let's, um, so moving on back to that second point here, I wanna get a chat poll going because I love chat polls, you guys know that. Um, and talking about that point of giving space to your crush, I wanna ask you guys this. Um, how can I frame this in a yes or no? I guess maybe the best way would be like this. Do you feel like, do you feel like you are leading towards the friend zone with your crush? Maybe we'll keep it at that. Do you feel like you're leading towards the friend zone with your crush? That the more you talk to them, the more you feel like, wow, actually, I don't know if this is helping. I think they might be viewing me as a friend. And you're kind of stuck in a place where it's like, do I keep trying to pursue them? Is that going to make it worse or is that going to make it better? Do you feel like you're kind of stuck in this friend zone area with your crush? Yes or no? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, let's see. Reading through here. Judah Rondez says, hey, Josh, I told Paloma I like her and she said she's only ever seen me as a friend. Uh, but she said we can definitely still be friends since we haven't talked in a while. Yeah, Judah, I hear where you're coming from on that. I think ultimately she's expressed how she feels, right? Um, she's expressed how she feels and she wants to maintain a friendship. I think ultimately you have to decide for yourself. Is a friendship something you want to maintain there? I'm not saying do you want to like not be friendly with her, but I mean, maintain a friendship status where she might want to talk to you about other guys that she likes, or she may turn to you whenever she's bored and lonely, but maybe is not reciprocating the romantic feelings you may have. So if you feel like you really want a relationship with her, but that's not what's going to happen, you have to ask yourself, is being a friend to her going to actually make me feel worse? Because I'm not going to be able to date her. I'm not going to be able to pursue her in the way that I want. Uh, that's something it's important to think about. So I asked you guys here, do you feel like you're in the friend zone area with your crush? And here's what you had to say. Ezekiel says, I don't know. SpongeBob says, yes. Uh, Rage Master says, I'm not sure. Alex Burns says, yes. Uh, Ashes and Roses says, I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet. I hear you on that. Jalen says, I don't know if she likes me or not, so I don't know. Jalen, I hear you on that. I think, though, it's important to look at the signs. If she's blocked you and she has a boyfriend currently, there's a high likelihood that maybe she isn't interested in any kind of romantic relationship, at least for now. Don't worry. I have more tips here that I'm going to share, and I think they actually could be applicable to your situation, Jalen. Uh, but I think from where it stands, objectively, it looks like she's not interested. Uh, Melvin says, no, I don't have contact. She ghosted me. 
Dynamite says, not really. Uh, Kip Neal says, I have trouble knowing how to escalate. Yeah, I hear you on that. Hubert says, no. Hip Channel says, no. Um, well, I missed what Stewart said. I think that's incredibly naive and extremely sexist. I, I might have missed what Darkest Night said, but um, anyway. <laughs> Davidio says, I've been friends with many times. Palmer Creek says, she blocked me. Now I feel super sad. I hear you on that. I hear you on that. Judah says, it's 50-50 for me. Forrest says, yeah, well, last night I got friend zoned by a girl I like, and I was pissed, and I even talked to my parents, and they told me it's best if I put romantic feelings behind me. Yeah, Forrest, I think that if you feel like you've been friend zoned by that crush, it's very easy to get angry and frustrated and annoyed, right? It's very easy to think to yourself, why won't they like me? What am I doing wrong? What's wrong with me, right? We start to flip it on that person and get angry with them. But all that person has done is expressed how they feel. They just don't see you in that way. They're not wrong for doing it. They're not mean for doing it. They're not trying to do it just to hurt your feelings. That's just them expressing their feelings. And the best thing we can do when we feel hurt and sad by getting friend zoned is to kind of reflect on that and to ask ourselves, hmm, what could I have done differently? Maybe I didn't flirt enough. Maybe I didn't um, ask them out soon enough. Maybe I was a little shy and awkward and I can probably work on those skills. Think about the things that you can kind of reflect on in your own behavior and say, you know what, I'm going to try to improve those things so the next person I ask out, maybe I'll have a better chance. I think if you approach it from that perspective, you start to see it as a learning opportunity rather than failure, right? Because when we see something as pure failure, all we do is kind of see it as a stain on us. We are bad. We're not good. We suck. But if you look at it as a learning opportunity, yes, you didn't succeed, but there are pieces that you can pick up from it. You could say, you know what? I need to work on smiling more when I talk to someone. I realize I don't do that enough, or I kind of keep my head down and look away and don't make eye contact. And maybe that doesn't come off confident. That might be something I want to work on. Thinking about these pieces is going to help you start to progress forward in a better way. So if you feel like you've been friend zoned by that crush, give them space. That space is going to make a huge difference in everything and how you pursue the next person and how you two interact with each other and all that as well. I'm going to read a few more questions here, a few more things you guys are saying. Like I said, if you have a burning question, you can always use the super chat function or like I said, post your questions in the chat if you just want to talk about what you're talking about. Okay. Let's see what some more of you guys are saying. Uh, Romantic George Failure says, if you feel like you're in the friend zone, you should do what I did. I deleted my I deleted my Snapchat and I went to work on myself. Now I'm a better man. I hope this inspires you. Yeah, I hear where you're coming from on that. I think for some people, they may want to delete their social media profiles. I personally would say, hey, I wouldn't go about deleting your profile because if you delete your profile, you know, I think that you're losing opportunities to talk to other people, right? People communicate through Snapchat and Instagram and stuff. So I wouldn't go, I wouldn't say like delete your profile. I can understand maybe blocking that person or muting their posts. I get that. Um, and I understand where, where, you know, where, where you may, where you come in on that and your perspective. Red Lightning says, I'm here for anyone who wants to DM anything and I'm a lot better and better mindset. So to everyone here, I've been working on myself and the mods. I want you all to know that. Yeah, Arby, like I said, I think that, you know, you're, you're doing your best to work on yourself and that's the best thing anyone can ever ask for, man. Um, and look, he, if you guys want to chat, Red Lightning is making himself available to chat with you guys. Okay. Uh, Owen says, Snapchat is excellent for getting into relationships. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Snapchat, Instagram, these are good tools to kind of communicate with people, to flirt, to talk, to video chat and all these different things. Let's move on to point number three here, guys. And that's going to be this. Tip number three. Don't count yourself out just because you messed up. Now, I think what a lot of people do is that, you know, they feel like, hey, I failed with my crush. It's over. I'm going to give up. No point in pursuing them. Uh, but I think it's important to realize, hey, look, we all get nervous sometimes. But, you know, who you are now and who you will be when you reconnect or if you reconnect with that person is, is going to be a totally different. You're going to be a vastly different person, right? I don't think people realize this, that, Look, you may be nervous now when you talk to your crush. You may be scared to interact with them or ask them out, but don't count yourself out just yet. Look, as you get older, as you grow, as you learn, as you work on those confidence skills, you may approach it from a totally different angle. You may see that person in a totally different place and the situation may be totally different. I said differently, to different, totally different like 12 times there. Let me give you a quick example of that, right? I'm going to do a video on this. It's going to be a story time video, but I'll give you a bit of the story here. There was a girl that um, I had met when I was younger and, you know, I was wrestling in the park and stuff with my friends and this girl ended up liking me, right? So 
she liked me, but I was still kind of nervous to like make a move. I would talk to her. We would even hang out one-on-one -on -one tons of times throughout the summer and throughout the school year and stuff. But I was still too nervous to make a move. And I don't know why. I was just always afraid like, oh, how do I go about doing it? What's the right way? Is it going to be awkward? I just let negative thoughts kind of like and overthinking totally cloud my judgment and ruin the situation, right? It wasn't until the very end of the summer, the very, very end of the summer, we were hanging out and she kind of made the move on me. And then we started like making out and all these different things, right? But I thought to myself, and then like after that, I went back to college, right? And I remember thinking to myself, man, like I spent the entire summer like thinking about how I can make a move with this girl. Meanwhile, she was totally fine with it and it probably waiting for me to kind of take some kind of action the whole time. So even though now I'm back in school and I'm not seeing her, I'm thinking about this and I'm overthinking and I'm thinking to myself, man, I really, I wasted, wasted time, wasted opportunity to build something with her. Well, years pass and later on when I'm older, uh, and I feel a little bit more confident. I flirted with more girls. I've, I've just, I, you know, I've been in relationships, things like that. I now feel a little bit better about how to approach situations, how to talk to them. And now I run into this girl again, right? Summertime, I'm back from college. I run into her again and I tell myself, you know what? This is going to be way different for me because now I have a little bit more experience talking to girls dating. I'm a little bit more confident and I'm going to show her that new confident me. Now, the first time around, she probably thought, well, you know, he's probably not that interested in me and everything didn't go anywhere. But the second time around, I made the move. I flirted with her. We, we kind of hung out for a while, right, throughout that summer. And the reason why that happened was because I presented a new version of myself to her, the growth version of myself, right, where I felt a little bit better in my abilities. And I think a lot of people think to themselves, man, you know, um, I'm awkward around my crush. I don't know how to talk to them. I don't know how to even start a conversation or I did something and they thought I was weird or they told me they just see me as a friend, but who knows a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, if you run into that person again, things may be different. You will be in a different place in your life and they will be in a different place in their life. So don't count yourself out just because things aren't working right now. Focus on working on yourself, focus on self growth, focus on the things that you can improve so that if you do run into that person again, things may be different. Azim, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Um, let's see if it pops up here. I don't know. Sometimes it takes forever to pop up. But Azim says, in the past, you've said to give them the opportunity to win you over. What if girls feel like guys need to win them over and show them that you're worthy? Um, let me uh, see. Yeah, it's still take forever. Um, let me get back to the, that point there. Oh, there it is. Okay, there's Azim Super Chat. Azim said, let me reread this. In the past, you said to give them the opportunity to win you over. Give them the opportunity to win you over. Okay, but what if the girl feels like guys need to win them over? Okay, so the idea ultimately is like, who should pursue who, right? Like, sometimes the girl may sit back and be like, I want this guy to chase me. But then sometimes the guy may be like, I want to create an environment where the girls come to me, right? There is a lot of this like who should chase who type of thinking, right? I'm a big believer in the situation that if you like someone, you should pursue them. I don't, I don't believe in the idea of like, oh, I just want to be cool and have people come up to me. It's like, no, if you're interested in someone, the best way to make it work is for you to pursue them. Now, I understand what you're saying, Azeem. It, it's like, it's important to try to create an environment where people want to come talk to you. And and to your point, to my first, to that story I just shared, when I was hanging out with my friends and I was doing my wrestling thing, the girl saw me there. She thought, oh, wow, look at Josh. He's leading this thing. He's in charge of the whole wrestling thing. That's really cool. And she was attracted to me. She was interested in me. So I created an environment where she approached me. However, like I said, I think it's important to create that situation, create an environment where you're doing things that you love, right? Like you're having fun, you're being a leader, you're being confident and let people observe that. And you will create an environment where people want to talk to you. But I think when it comes to directly liking someone, someone that you directly want to talk to, the best thing you can do is to approach them and start that conversation. Don't sit back and wait for them to do it. This is the difference there. You can create an environment where people come to you, but you're not doing it in the, in the sense that you're waiting for people to approach you. You're just creating it, right? It's like, I, cr I may create a beautiful garden, right? I may put up flowers, I may plant things, um, but I'm not gonna wait for the bees to come there, right? I'm not gonna say, oh, I'm only gonna plant flowers when I see bees. I need to plant the flowers and the bees come to the flowers. So that's kind of how I think you need to approach it there. 
Um, but that's a really good question, Azim. Um, who should pursue who? I think if you like someone, you should go after them. Thank you for the super chat. Now, what I also want to say, guys, is this. I shared a personal story there. I sh talked about uh, a situation in my life where I approached a girl. In my book, Embracing the Awkward, Anthony, also, I just want to say I'm happy you got the copy, Anthony. Thank you for being, uh, you know, a moderate on Discord and all that you do, man. I really appreciate all your help. I'm going to talk about the Discord in a second, guys, here, but I want to just point out my book here. Um, in this book, I wrote it and called Embracing the Awkward. I talk about some of my own personal experiences, some of my dating stories. I also share a lot of practical advice on how to deal with rejection, how to figure out your path and your purpose, how to start conversations, how to be more mindful in life and, and practice gratitude. I talk about a lot of things uh, in this book that I do in my videos. So this book is a good condensed version. You could sit down and read across you know, a week, two weeks, a few days, whatever, however long it takes you to sit down and digest books. Jump in and read it. Um, I think it'd be super, super helpful for you if you feel like you run into awkward situations in life, you don't really know how to approach them or handle them. This book's gonna kind of just be a good guidebook, right? I consider it, it's a guide for teens. That's what the sub subtitle is. It's a guide for teens to succeed at school life and relationships. I think it'll be super, super helpful for you. So I would highly re recommend checking out. You can order it on Amazon. Just go to Amazon, type in Embracing the Awkward, or you can go to the joshspeaks.com slash awkward, and it'll take you to this really cool Amazon landing page that's set up. It's like, it's an Amazon page, but it's got its own cool landing page stuff with graphics and stuff. It's cool. Anyway, search it up, guys, on Amazon. Check it out. I think you really, really enjoy it. Now, I mentioned the Discord here, and there's a reason why I mentioned the Discord. Our Discord community is just such an awesome place to be. Uh, the reason why I say that is because we have such an awesome group of people in there that are just talking about what's going on in their lives, sharing advice. People are making friends. Some people are getting into relationships with each other. It's just a crazy fun environment there. Um, I love, I love communicating with you guys through the discord. I love talking about what's on your lives, uh, going on in your lives. I love learning about what you guys are doing. We have a self promo board so you can share your YouTube channel. You could share a video you made or anything that you're working on. You could share your projects. We have an art board where people are just amazing artists. I'm so amazed at the craziness and the cool things that they designed. So definitely check out our discord guys. I think you'll really, really enjoy it. If you're looking for a sense of community and a place you can make friends and talk to people, the joshspeaks.com slash discord is the best place to do it. Azim, thank you again for the $5 super chat. Azim, let's get into this question. Azim says, why do celebs only date celebs? That's a good question. I feel like it's impossible to stand out to celebs, let alone a popular girl in high school. That's a good question. So why do celebs only date celebs, right? I think that the reason why you see celebrities get into relationships with each other, break up, have kids, get divorced, get into multiple relationships, the reason why you see celebs staying in this world is because when you're a celebrity, um, Kaden asked, what is Discord, Kaden? It's a it's a group chat. Can someone explain, type out what Discord is in the chat while I answer it seems question? Um, <laughs> um, the reason why celebrities date celebrities, I spit there, um, is because celebrities are in this very, very taxing world, right? They have to be up, they have to travel a lot, they have to read scripts, there's a high demand to do interviews, they're in the public eye all the time. It's a very, very taxing life. But the best people that understand what a celebrity is going through is another celebrity, right? So, you know, um, Hugh Jackman is in the limelight, right? People are taking pictures of him, people are, oh, Wolverine, blah, 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 everyone wants his attention. So, I don't know if Hugh Jackson's dating other celebrity. He's just the first one that came to my mind. But the reason why they may date other celebrities is because they understand each other's world, right? It's not foreign to them. If a normal, regular, everyday person is dating a celebrity, they may feel like, wow, my, my husband's never around. My wife's never around. You know, they're always busy. We don't spend any time together. But when your celebrities kind of intermingled together, it's very easy to have someone kind of understand what you're going through. And plus they work on projects together. They develop chemistry. They spend a lot of time having deep emotional moments in movies with each other. That's why I think celebrities date celebrities. And to the second point, uh, I feel like it's impossible. Um, I feel like it's impossible to stand out to celebs, let alone a popular girl in school. Yeah, the reason why I think it's impo not impossible, but very, very difficult to stand out to celebrities is because um, they are just getting inundated with so many messages and so many requests and so many fans all over the time, all over the place that it's very hard for them to kind of figure out um, who's only talking to them because of their status, who's talking to them because they really care about them. It's hard to decipher those things. When it comes to talking to a popular girl, I understand that 
some of that buzz and appeal still is there, right? Like, oh, the popular girl, she hangs out with the popular guys and everyone in school adores them. But you got to understand too, as you move your way down from celebrity to even popular girl, which is a normal person, they still have the same awkward moments that you do. They still have the same thoughts and feelings. You know, they still have those experiences there. I'll give you guys an example. When I was part, uh, on the social good club thing yesterday, one thing that kind of shocked my mind, I don't know how many of you guys have seen Ned's declassified uh, school survival guide. Um, but I was on this call and I'm looking at all the people on it. And I noticed the, the, the person who played Ned Devin, I forgot his name was on the call too. And I thought, Oh, this is really cool. It's, it's Ned from Ned's declassified. This is really cool. And I realized, wait a second, he's a young person who cares about helping others. He wants to make change in this world. He's a positive creator. Yeah, he's a person, normal person, just like me, even though he's a celebrity. So it kind of, it was a moment that kind of hit me there that like, at the end of the day, we are all people. We all have thoughts and feelings. We all, you know, want to be loved and cared for, for who we are, right? Doesn't matter if you make a million dollars a year or zero dollars a year. We still have that same value in common. So that was a long-winded answer, but I hope that was helpful, Azeem. I hope that that um, that kind of answered the question there. Donna says Josh is a celebrity. Ashley says Josh is a minor celebrity. I don't consider myself a celebrity at all. Um, although I have uh, I have had a few instances where people have stopped me and like, oh, you're the Josh Speaks and stuff. Um, so that is cool. That is fun. It's like, oh, that's awesome, you know. But I don't consider myself a celebrity. I live my life like a normal person doing normal things. Anyway, I want to move on to point number four here, guys. Um... Let's get on to point number four. Tip number four is going to be this. As you get older, your feelings for them will change. Now, this is something I think, um, I know, right? Donna, when is it coming to Netflix? I love Ned's Declassified. It's so, it's so good. Anyway, um, as you get older, your feelings for them will change. And I want to explain this too, because I've dealt with this. Uh, and it's something that I wanted to include this point in the stream because I wanted to share a real life experience with you guys. When I say as you get older, your feelings will change. Here's what I mean. The crushes that you have now, as you get older, you're going to start to see them get into relationships. You're going to start to see them go off to college and move to new states and move to new locations and have children and get married. You're going to see as you get older, you're going to see those old crushes move on with their lives. And the, the feelings that you have for them grow and change in a different way, right? So like, I look at some of the people that I had crushes on in like middle school and high school that I was totally infatuated with. Like, oh my God, I love them. I want to marry them. They're perfect. And as I got older and as I dated more, as I learned more about myself and grew in my own direction, I started to see them do the same thing, right? I follow them on Instagram or Facebook and I see them kind of update about their lives. And it's like when I see them post something or I see them share something, I think to myself, there's still a point of attraction. Like, oh yeah, I still like them. But if I see that they're posting, oh my God, just got engaged or, oh, just moved to another place. I'm no longer in New York or wherever it is. Um, a part of me feels like, oh, okay, they've moved on. I realize that my attraction for them is altered in that it moves away from like, I want to be with them all the time. I like them too. I want them to be happy in their lives. I want them to be, you know, just grateful for who they have. And if they, if they, if that crush that I had in high school now is let's say engaged, right? I'm happy for her. I want her to move on. I want her to find someone that's going to make her happy. Right? So I think a lot of times we think, man, I'm never going to get over this crush. I'm always going to love them. And I'm always going to be sad because I'm never going to be with them. But that does go away. As you get older, you start to see it go away. You start to feel it go away. So it's something I've definitely experienced as I've gotten older. Um, but I want to ask you guys this. Let's do a chat poll here. Um, and I want to frame it in this, in this, in this way. Um, because, because I think it's important because a lot of people think along these lines. So I want to get your guys' perspective on this. I want to use the term here. Very controversial, controversial term, I know. But let's talk about soulmates for a second, right? A lot of times when you're younger, right? Or any of you guys, right? And I consider younger to be <laughs> anything probably younger than me, right? Um, when you're when you're at the age you are, um, it's easy to feel like, wow, the person I like, I feel like they're my soulmate. I feel like they are the perfect person for me. So let's get a chat poll. I want to ask you guys here. Do you feel like your crush right now, the crush that you have is your soulmate? or one of your soulmates, if you feel like you have multiple soulmates, do you feel like your crush is your soulmate? Yes or no? I wanna hear what you guys have to say. 
uh, jump into the chat and write it, guys. Uh, let's see. Donna uh, Ashes says, hey, Donald, do you think Cor Corgi might listen to you about the book? I don't know. Maybe I missed that. Um, Azim says, in the past, you mentioned that Hollywood is fantasy when it comes to dating, but I feel like a lot of people use different strategies seen in films and it works for them. So how's it different from reality? Yeah, I mean, look, Hollywood is uh, like a heightened fabrication of reality, right? So it's like things may work in movies. People may mimic things in movies, but movies are made with the sole purpose of entertaining. So sometimes it's like conversations are not how real conversations would work. They're made just to kind of make a scene more dramatic or make a scene more romantic. Um, I asked you guys, is your current crush your soulmate or do you feel like they are? Here's what you guys had to say. Ezekiel Molina says, yes. Hip Channel says, no. Ezekiel says, she's the one. Ezekiel, I'd love you to explain in the chat. Why do you feel like she's the one? What draws you to her in that way? Alex Burns says, no. Dynamite says, yes. Caden says, yes. Melvin says, no. Hubert says, no. Corgi says, hmm, maybe. Jalen says, I think so. Redlining says, I got friend zone. Sorry to hear that, man. Anthony says, I believe Haley is my soulmate. Anthony, perfect. Jump into the chat here and, and explain to us. T t ex tell everyone here in the chat why you feel that way. What is the connection you guys have? What leads you to feel like Haley's your soulmate? Um, just so people can get an understanding here of like what that's like. Um, Darkest Knight says, I feel like less than the guy they date because they are always better looking, taller, smarter, and more successful man than me. Darkest Knight, I hear you on that. Um, look, who, who that person may date in the future is is a reflection of where they are in their lives, right? So you can't compare yourself now to someone in the future because people's opinions and thoughts and, and feelings change and the type of partner they're looking for or the type of partner rather that they need in their lives is very different from where they are today. Uh, in the future is what I meant. Um, let's see. Haley says, honestly, I never believed in soulmates, but I think he is. That's awesome. I'm really happy. <laughs> Uh, Red Lightning says, we, we got, already got lovebirds in the chat. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ashley says, I'm not going to answer that until I get some time to get to know her. That's a really good answer. That's a really, really good answer. Stuart says, don't believe in soulmates. I agree with you, Stuart. I think that the, the word soulmate, just like we've talked in the past about the word like um, simp and all these other terms, I think are very overused and, and people have such broad definitions in them that it's hard for two people to mean the same thing. So someone may consider a soulmate to be like, Hey, I feel like this is the type of person that we just click. It just feels natural. Maybe that consider that a soulmate or some people might feel like a soulmate is a person who I'm destined to be with. It's such a varied degree of uh, what it means, but I hear you on that. I think on this gigantic, like stars align level, maybe I, I don't agree with it either, but I think maybe on a more practical level, people are using it. Like we just click. Then I, then I, I think I got line with that more. Uh, let's see. Azim says, Josh, do you believe in soulmates? I feel like my main crush from high school was my soulmate. Cold approaching taught me not to, uh, taught me to move on easily from women after rejection, but not my main crush. Azim, yeah. And I think what we're talking about in this stream aligns perfectly with your situation, right? This is a girl that you just feel is your soulmate. You're drawn to her, um, but she's in a different place in her life right now, right? She's, off in college doing her own thing you're here you know like trying to do your own thing as well you're learning you're growing and stuff there's still a deep attachment to her even though she doesn't currently like you back so i want you guys to really think about that right think about you know i'll pull it up here again think about point number four here as you get older your feelings for them change that you know you may feel so um you might feel so attached to you know that person that 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 you know that you like right now but as you get older you're going to start to see things develop differently with them. You're going to develop differently. You may not like them in the same way. Or if you see they're in a relationship, you may say, hey, I'm just happy that they're doing their thing. And that's it. Uh, Anthony says, Haley and I share a lot of funny moments together. Three months strong. Three months, man. Uh, we know how to make each other happy. We just know each other already. That's awesome. I'm so happy for you guys. I really, really am. Um, Donna says the book is definitely for both genders. Yep. The book is definitely for both genders. Um, it's definitely, I would say it's for not even both genders. It's for all genders, right? No matter what you identify as, I think there's practical tips in there, uh, for anyone, right? Um, how, however you may align, however you may feel. I think ultimately what I try to really talk about in the book is more so how to connect better with people, right? So it can be anyone connecting with anyone. It really is about deep, developing that deeper sense of connection and care and trust and kindness with someone else. Um, so I'd say the book is for anyone and everyone. Um, 
looking through some more of the comments here. Juan Diego says, hey, Josh, I need some help. So my crush agreed to hang out after quarantine, but I have mixed feelings because the last thing I texted, she left me on scene and it's been 15 weeks since we text. I'm afraid to text. Juan, that's a good point. If you've been left on red and I'll, for anyone else that's in a situation where there's been a significant amount of time before you've talked to your crush, if you've been left on red, the best thing for you to do is if you're going to jump back into a conversation with them is jump in with uh, a reason to text them again, right? So don't just say, hey, it's been a while. Jump in and say something like, oh my God, I had a dream and you were in it the other day. So I wanted to see how you're doing or wow, so much has happened. I feel like I got to catch you up on it, but what's going, going on with you? You create a reason to want to talk to them. You haven't talked to them in a while and you want to fill them in on something cool. You had a dream about them. You, uh, you ran into someone or something happened that reminded you of them. Uh, find a reason to get to, to text them again. And also, if you're going to text them again, do it with the intention of leading it to something more personal, right? You may text them and be like, hey, what's up? How you been? And they say, good. And then you kind of falls off. Text them and be like, you know what? Let's jump on a video call so we can just chat. It'll be quicker. It'll be easier. Or, hey, let's let's jump on a phone call and talk there. Try to take it to a step above text because the last time you text, it kind of fell flat. So you want to start with text and then move to something more personal in that first conversation back. Um, I'm going to answer one more question. And I'm going to jump into point number four here or point number five, rather. Um, Alex Burns says, Josh, how can I be sensitive to girls? How can I... How can I show that? Uh, how can I them in a sensitive way? Can you help? Yeah, Alex Burns. I'm not sure entirely what you mean by be more sensitive to girls. Perhaps let me take it. Let me take a guess at it. Maybe what you mean is that um, it's hard for you to open up. It's hard for you to share how you feel or to talk about your feelings with girls that you like. And I think if that's the case, if you feel like it's difficult for you to kind of put yourself out there, I think one good way to practice that is to focus on one person, one person you want to get closer to, and focus on talking to to them more on an individual daily level talk about what's going on in your day talk about what's on your mind talk about how you feel if you can practice with one person it gets easier and easier to do with more people hip channel thank you so much for the five dollar super chat let's pull this up here thank you again hip chat says hey josh why does she act like she wants to be friends but want uh, hold on why does she act like she just wants to be friends but wants to move in and gets angry and jealous when i small talk with her mom and girls Interesting. Okay. So it sounds to me like she wants to move forward, right? Uh, you said that she, she wants to just be friends, but wants to move in. So she wants to get closer to you. Um, it's possible she may not in, be entirely sure about the status of what she wants to develop. She may know she has feelings for you, right? Like she likes you and she enjoys the attention you give her and she enjoys communicating with you and learning with you and spending time together. But she may not be ready for a relationship, right? Maybe she feels like, hey, we need to move in and see if this can work before we can establish a relationship. I personally think that you shouldn't move in together until you've been dating for a while. And the reason I say that is because moving in with someone is a big commitment. You're moving your furniture, your life, your stuff in there. And if things don't work out, it could be a really awkward, <laughs> awkward experience to have to move all back out. But to your point, she gets angry and jealous when you small talk with her mom and girls. I, it's possible, like I said, that she may have feelings for you, but she may not know what she wants to establish that as. She may, like, maybe she's not sure if she wants a full-on relationship. Maybe she just wants to casually date, and she just doesn't like seeing you talk to other girls. Maybe she um, wants a relationship, but she's waiting for you to kind of like directly ask her out. It could be a number of factors there, but I think ultimately the solution that's going to help you through this is talk to her and establish what you want in the equation. Do you want a relationship? Do you want to be with her? Do you want to be monogamous with her in a single relationship, just the two of you? Do you want to casually date with her? Be very, very focused on establishing what it is that you want and listening, really, really listening and hearing and understanding what she wants too. It isn't just about telling her, this is what I want to do. What do you, sorry, this is what I want to do. What do you want to do? It's not, it's not about that. It's about, hey, listen, I really like you. I want to be in a relationship. I want us to be together. Um, but I'm not sure where you stand. So I feel like we need to align there if we're going to move forward. Take that approach and look, if you feel like she's not on the same page as you, you guys are on different pages, then it might make sense to kind of distance yourself and focus on other people. Ultimately, it's going to come down to what you both want. If both of those things are congruent and you guys agree with each other, that's the best thing to do moving forward. Thank you for the $5 super chat, uh, hip channel or HIP channel, maybe hip channel. Uh, I really appreciate it, man. Okay, let's get into point number five, not four. Point number five, and that's going to be this. 
We're walking through five tips for getting over a crush that doesn't like you back. Now, afterwards, I'm going to give a recap of everything. Um, let's do that now. Okay, point number five is this. Not every, not every love story is a fairy tale. Waiting doesn't guarantee success. This is, I think, a harsh reality I wanted to share. Um, and I wanted to dive into what I mean by this. Not every love story is a fairy tale. What I ultimately mean is that just because you like someone, just because you are head over heels for someone, just because you feel like they are your soulmate and they are perfect, doesn't mean that in the end you're going to end up with them, right? When we talk about getting over your crush, it's important to realize that getting over them might just mean accepting that, hey, this is not meant to be. We're going to go our own separate ways. Now, I want to dive more into that point, but first, I want to address Azim's super chat question. Azim, thank you for the $5 super chat. Azim said, I understand you say no to using generic Convo openers when flirting, but I still see people not getting creative using phrases like, what's up, no effort. Yeah, yeah, this is a good point, right? So, like, I'll say something like, hey, listen, stay away from things like, hey, how's it going? How you doing? What's up? These kind of more generic phrases. And the reason why I say stay away from them, not because saying, hey, what's up is totally wrong and you're going to fail. The reason why I say it is because a lot of people use these phrases and stay there. They stay there. That's the problem, right? If a guy walks up to a girl and he's like, hey, what's up? And she's like, oh, hi, how you doing? And then he moves into another conversation piece. Then he moves into asking a question. Then he moves into asking her out, telling her he likes her, whatever it is. He's progressing the conversation. So it's not so much don't use these things. These things um, shouldn't be the only piece that you're using. So many people just start a conversation with what's up and then wait for the other person to kind of create the conversation, right? When you go, hey, what's up? How's everything going? You've now flipped it and you've put it on that other person to tell you what they're doing, to tell you what's up. And if they're not doing anything interesting, conversation dies, right? Like they don't know what to say. So you've given up reins of the conversation. You've given up a reason to carry it forward. So it isn't so much, it isn't so much don't say things like, hey, what's up? How you doing? I feel like we naturally greet each other like that, right? Like if I jump on a call here, it's like, hey, how's it going? Like it's just a natural thing I'm gonna say. I think instead of just leaving it there, you need to follow up with another phrase. You need to follow up with something important to say. Now, if you are someone that feels like you fall flat after the, hey, what's up, how's it going, how you doing in text messages and combos, whatever it is, this is what you guys need to check out. This is my 20 icebreaker conversation starters. This, these are 20 different conversation topics you can integrate after that, hey, what's up, to kind of just start a fun, interesting conversation with them. Now, what I really think is cool about this guide when I put it together was that I didn't want to just give you a list of like, say this, say this, say this, say this. In this guide, I share an opener and then I share what you can do as a follow-up, what you can do to expand and go deeper into that opener. I really tried to dive into the idea of like, don't just say a line, ask a question, ask it with an intention, ask it with purpose, ask it with a reason to follow up. So you guys can check out this free guide I put together. Just go to the joshspeaks.com slash ice dash breakers to download it. Um, I think it'll be super helpful. It's the perfect thing to have on your phone. If you're texting your crush and you just want to like come up with a fun conversation, just download it on your phone and then switch over to it, pull up a conversation topic and integrate it into the conversation. That's the perfect thing I think to use after that what's up. But let's get back into point number five here, guys. As I was saying, you know, like, not every love story is a fairy tale. Waiting doesn't guarantee success. So many people have this Hollywood glamorized ideal of like, you know, one day, one day we're going to be together, you know, in the future, it's just going to happen. And the truth is, it's not really how it works, right? There is a very, very, very small number of cases where people, um, you know, after five years, 10 years of not speaking to each other, get together, right? Uh, me and Azeem have talked about like Grant Cardona as an example of someone who pursued um, the person he liked for years and eventually married her. Um, and like I said, Grant Cardone is one of <laughs> how many, who knows how many, you know? So I think it's, a, it's better for us to not bank on the idea of like, this is a fairy tale. We're meant to be together. One day it's going to work. Don't bank on that. Instead, focus on what makes more sense. Hey, as I learn and grow and develop and become more confident in myself, as the years go on and I date more people, I may not be interested in pursuing that person. They may head on a different path in life that differs from me, right? This is something we don't take into account and don't realize that 
when we really talk about the idea of getting over your crush, a crush that doesn't like you back, it isn't just a matter of like, how do I block them out of my mind? How do I stop thinking about them? It is really a matter of how do I grow as a person? How do I develop myself in a way where what I'm looking for in a partner changes? What I'm looking for in a, in a, in a relationship is different and new and, and reflects who I am now as a person, right? This is kind of the crux of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about getting over someone. It isn't just how can I distract myself? It's about really recognizing where you are and who you are and who fits best in your life, right? It's about who fits best in your life, not, wow, I really like them. I want to be with them. And that's the extent that's just surface level. We're talking about going deeper than the surface guys. So I want to walk you through these five points again. We'll kind of do a quick recap before we move into our mindful moment here. Um, but I want to answer maybe a few more questions here, guys, that you guys may have in the chat. So if you have a super, you want to donate a super chat and ask a burning question, go for it. If you have a question, a normal question, just post it in the chat. Let's see what you guys are saying here. Now, before I do that, I do want to say this, guys. Right after this live stream, I'm going to be jumping over on the Instagram after party. This Instagram after party is going to be a little bit shorter because I started a little bit later today. But... I'm super excited. If you're not following me over on Instagram, what are you waiting for, guys? Follow me over on Instagram. Right after this live stream, I'm going to go live over on Instagram for the after party. Now, what's cool about those live streams is that I like to bring you on. So if you want to be part of the live stream, just hit the little video request button to join and I'll bring you on. I always bring like a few people on. We chat about what's going on in your lives. It's pretty laid back, pretty cool. All the cool kids are invited, including you guys. If you're on this live stream right now, consider this your invitation to, to the Instagram after party, guys. I'd love to see you over there. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and also, um, one thing I'll share before I kind of do this recap here, just quickly, quickly, quickly. If you want to talk to me one on one every single month privately, you know, like uh, I, I've done a few Patreon calls this week alone, um, and I love talking to you guys. I love talking to you one on one, right? It's like it's one thing to kind of respond to text messages or respond to DMs or answer a comment, but to sit and dedicate time to really kind of fill me in on what's going on in your life, to walk me through the challenges you face and the struggles you have, um, I think it's going to be super helpful. So if you want my personal advice, you want to talk to me one on one every single month. Just head on over to Patreon, go to patreon.com slash the Josh speaks. That's one way. The other way is if you look down below right next to where the subscribe button is, there's a join button. You can join and become a champion level member or any of the other levels there. Uh, and there's cool perks that come along with it too, right? Like if you become a YouTube channel member, you get to use these cool little emojis right there. Whenever you, um, whenever you type here in the live streams, you get a little cool badge next to your name uh, during the live streams. It's really cool. But like I said, the key point here is that if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one every single month and just have dedicated time to talk, uh, th those are going to be the best ways, Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Okay, let's get into the recap here, guys. And that's going to be this. By the way, did you all hit the like button on this? Who hasn't hit the like button, huh? Who's the jerk? Who's the jerk who didn't hit it yet? Joking. All right, let's take a sip of water before we get into this. Okay. Let's jump into the points here, guys. We're talking about five tips for getting over a crush that doesn't like you back. Five tips for getting over because it doesn't like you back, guys. Point number one is this. You're going to find someone that you like more than them. A lot of times people feel like, um, hey, you know what? Like this is the only person I'm ever going to like. I'm never going to have a crush uh, beyond them. You know, like they're my soulmate. I love them. But the truth of the matter is as you get older, as you enter new things. Look, some of you guys that are in middle school, when you go into high school, things are going to be so different. You go from high school to college, things are going to be even more different. When you go to college to moving on, things change, right? Your life changes depending on different stages that you're in. So, you know, um, if, if you feel like, if you feel like, Hey, you know, I like someone now and I'm in high school and they're my soulmate and I love them. You may think differently when you're in college. You may think differently when you get older. Uh, I want to jump over to Azim. Azim, thank you for the $5 super chat. You're the man, Azim. Azim says, Josh, I think you're a cool celebrity. We should start calling you the rock speaks because you started lifting heavy weights, getting stronger, my man. <laughs> yeah. Slowly in time, build up these, um, these, these, uh, muscles here and get those gains. Yeah, guys, to Azim's point, I appreciate it. Thank you, Azim. Um, I've been working out now. I work out four times a week. Um, and I just kind of built a gym, a home gym in my garage. So I bought myself a bench. 
uh, and I bought kind of the Nordic track um, dumbbell weights, the adjustable ones. You can add like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And I've just been working out every single morning when I wake up. It's so much fun. You guys have probably seen it. Like I'll jump on, I'll do my daily meditation and I'll post from Calm. I'll ask you guys a question and then I go hit the gym downstairs and work out before I kind of start my day. It's a good way to get me super pumped, super charged. So yeah, I'm just trying to make those gains, man. Ultimately for me, it's just, I, I love working out. It's fun. It's enjoyable. And I just feel healthier. I feel better about myself when I'm active and physically active. So thank you for the $5 super chat, Azim. Really appreciate it. Okay, let's get back to those five points. So that first point there was you're going to find someone that you like more than them. As you get older, um, the type of person you're looking for in your life will change. You'll grow as a person. You'll discover new people. So don't think that they are the only person that's worth pursuing, especially if you've been rejected by them. There are more people down the line. Point number two is give them space. Giving them space is good uh, for the both of you to grow. Sometimes when we like someone, even if we've been rejected or friends owned by them, we smother them a bit. <laughs> 300 subs workout stream? Maybe. That sounds cool. That sounds cool. I'll do, I'll do a workout stream with 300,000 uh, subs. Um, anyway, giving them space is good for the both of you to grow, right? If you smother your crush when you know that they don't like you, you're only going to put yourself deeper into the friend zone. It's important to give them space to kind of keep yourself a little bit distant from them. And the reason why I say keep yourself distant from them is because um, ultimately you want to pursue other people in the meantime too. You don't want to just focus all your time and attention on one person because when you do that, when you focus on all your time and attention on one person, you miss out on opportunities to meet other people, to talk to other people, to get to know them better. Point number three is this. Don't count yourself out just because you messed up. So many people think, hey, I screwed up with my crush. There's no chance of ever getting close to them. That's it. We're done. It's over, right? But the truth of the matter is, is that, like I said, as you get older, things change. I shared the story before with you guys that like I was nervous and shy around a girl I liked, but the second time around, I was way more confident and I had a better chance with her because I had, t I had time to grow and really learn and you know become a better version of myself. So really, really focus on that guys. Focus on that growth. Focus on the opportunity of, Hey, you know what? If things didn't work out today, let me learn from that experience. Let me see what I can work on. Let me build up my confidence so that when the time comes, when the time comes for you to potentially talk to them again, you feel like you're in a much better place. Now, on top of that too, as you get older, your feelings for them will change. This is something I've experienced firsthand that you may have a crush that you feel is your soulmate. You're perfect for each other. They're the one you want to be with. And you may start to see as you get older, they get into a relationship. They uh, get engaged. They move away from you. You know, like they are slowly becoming more and more distant from potentially ever dating you, right? You start to see that. I think a lot of times there's a fear of like, wow, but I'm always going to love this person. But that love is going to change. That love is going to evolve hopefully it can evolve in a way where you start to feel happy for them, right? You see them get on and be in a happy, happy relationship with someone and you're happy for them. You wish them well, you're okay with it. You're not angry or bitter or jealous of the fact that, oh my God, they're dating someone else. You're able to just be okay with it and move on. Important number five is this guys. Not every love story is a fairy tale. Waiting doesn't guarantee success. Far too often people think, well, I'm going to end up with this crush. They're my soulmate. They're the only person I can ever be with. But the truth of the matter is that's not how most crushes work out. Most of the time you have a crush on someone and you come across someone new. You start dating someone new. And yeah, you may still like that crush, but they're not the center and focus of your life. So I think it's important to realize that early on, to not carry this fairy tale idea of like one day we're going to be together. Just one day that person's going to like me back. Instead, focus on yourself, focus on your growth, focus on becoming the best version of yourself that you can be. Now I think you guys know what it's time for. And that is our mindful moment. I love the end of the live streams. One, because I get to hit the bell. But second, uh, uh, because I think that it gives us a chance to really absorb the things that we talked about in here. Not only the things I said, but I see all the feedback and conversations going on in the chat. The things you guys said too. I want us to really reflect on the theme of this stream, which is getting over your crush. And when I really, really talk about getting over your crush, like I said, it's about learning to see what you deeply want as a person and who deeply fits best in your life, right? Because getting over someone isn't just blocking them out, like I said before, it's about really recognizing, hey, does this person align with me and who I am? Are they really the best fit for me? Are they really on the same path as me that we can grow together? 
does it really make sense for me to invest time and energy and emotion into trying to pursue this person if they're not on that same wavelength? So what I want you guys to think about as we listen to the sound of the bell is I want you to think deeply about think deeply about what matters to you in a relationship. What really matters to you? Do you want a partner that understands you? Do you want a partner you can laugh with? Do you want a partner that is successful in life, that is pursuing their goals, pursuing their dreams? Maybe a mix of all that. Think about the type of partner that you think will fit best alongside you where you are in your life right now. Think about the happiness and the kindness you will experience if you came across that partner and recognize the journey it's going to take to find them. Listen to the sound of the bells. We think about the type of person we want to bring and invite into our lives as we invite the sound of the bell. It's going to wake the bell up. I hope the person that you thought about or the qualities you thought about are positive and helpful. And I hope you realize that the best thing you can do is for yourself to manifest those qualities, to bring them into the world. If you want a partner that's understanding, be understanding. If you want a partner that is kind and caring, be kind and caring. Because the only way for you to attract someone that has a good head on their shoulders and is working towards being their best selves is by being your best self every single day. Thank you guys for being a part of this live stream. I really enjoyed this conversation. I'm glad that the internet didn't go out like it did last week. Um, what I'm gonna do now is head on over to Instagram for the Instagram after party. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up on this stream, guys, thank you so much for being a part of it. If you're watching the replay, check out the videos over here where I'm gonna talk more about dealing with obsession over a crush and learning how to get over someone. Thank you guys again. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you for all your input and thoughts and feelings. On that note, guys, I'll catch you next time. As always, love and peace. See you guys over on Instagram.